When she found her little sister, Sarah swore that nothing would ever part them again. Nothing in that world, that was for sure. No Kratolog or dragon were going to stop Sarah the adventurer from seeing the little sister that she had not grown up with. Nothing from that world or any other world, no monster or unexpected obstacle, no lumbering ice giant or opportunistic predator, not even the witch herself was going to stop this amazing moment from happening. But if they did, then woe betide their hides for the next eight years. Even if that was the witch, the Esmeralda, and yes, Sarah knew very well that she herself was only a thirteen-year-old girl, and the ancient witch had grown in strength these last few years, but still... Sarah's passion was beyond her years and she'd waited all of the last eight of those years growing up here to see Rachel again, just as Jack had waited to see his son Robin. Finally, Sarah was about to be reunited with Rachel, even though Rachel herself didn't actually know she had a sister. Nothing was going to stop that moment from happening today. Nothing. She clenched her knees in the saddle strapped to the white tiger's back and shot another arrow at the small, flying, eight-legged little monsters that were trying to keep up with her and her cat. They were more of an annoyance than a real threat, but they were in her way right now, and Sarah was in no mood to be messed with. The creatures were trying to get close, so that they could explode their tiny poison spines at her. If one hit her, it would slow her down a bit. If two hit her, it would make her feel drowsy. If three hit her, then she might even become dopey enough to fall off White Tiger. Then, the scraggy little creatures would fly in circles around her, binding her to their webs ready to eat later. But Sarah knew that they had got more of a chance of landing on one of the sons and having a picnic than stopping her and Jack right at this moment. This moment was just too important. Anyway, as scary as the spider birds might look, they were rubbish at fighting, she thought as the arrow hit its last target, and it dropped from the sky with a squeal and hit the ground in a flump of feathery tangled legs. Sarah had made her own bows and arrows since she was ten years old, just as Jack had taught her to. He also taught her to try and improve each one, and each one she'd made since had been better than the one before. Jack taught her a lot about survival over the years. She noted that this latest bow needed just an ounce more tension in the dropweed string. Sarah could nook and loose an arrow from her hip as quick as a grown man could throw a punch, and that either at close range or at a fair distance. She had practised a great deal for fun and for survival, and she was good, really good. Jack clung on to the sled that was being pulled by Brian's two trolls, and which was carrying the catapult that might be useful when he and Sarah reached the dragon's lair. Always have a backup plan, he had always told Sarah. He shouted out to the trolls as they ran straight over a rocky patch of ground, and the sled bounced wildly. Hey boys, take the softer path! Remember that I'm not like you, I'm a fragile human! Sarah laughed out loud and shouted over to Jack as she and White Tiger sped past them. White Tiger nearly flying across the grass plain as if on a hunt to drop his prey. Hey Jack, you're about as fragile as a lump of Frau Poo, but if you want to lift... Jack gripped on hard as the sled bounced over the rocks and shouted back, I've made you too clever for your own good, little girl. We'll get back to the lair before you and that flabby pussycat. Just wait and see. I'll see my son before you see your sister. Jack and Sarah had always been a little competitive, and as she had grown up, that friendly competition had become a game by itself. Each would try to do better anything that they had tried to do together, whether that was hunting, racing, shooting, cooking, or even making shoes. White Tiger turned his massive feline head and briefly eyed Jack. He growled a thought into Jack's mind. Call me Flabby again, Jack, and see how good I can be at running and chewing old man two legs.